So for those who know how I trade, they know that I like to take profit pretty fast. And the reason being is I look for the most efficient move in my trading. I look to get from A to B as fast as possible, close the trade and be on with my day. And sometimes people always ask me, how did you know to close there? How come it's rejecting there so fast? And this is exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. We're gonna talk about take profit levels. So that's exactly how, what I'm gonna explain in this video. So this sounds like a great video, definitely stick to the end of the video. And if we could do the YouTube business, you guys know the drill, leaving a like, leaving a comment. So links are down below, follow me on Instagram for updates to see what we're doing during the week. And if you are interested in joining the free Discord, just to be part of that community, you can but those are only my official links. We'll never DM you any other links. That being said, let's get onto the charts and discuss how to take accurate take profit levels. So catch you there. All right, so when it comes to take profit levels, this is going to be something that's pretty simple but can get very, very complicated uh, due to emotions or due to hope. So the first thing we need to get out of the way is that do not be trying to take profit based on emotions. That's number one thing. You have to have technical reasons to take profit, not emotional based reasons, because it's either gonna be one or the other. You're either gonna close your trades way too early uh, and end up then your losses being way bigger than your wins, or you're just gonna try keep holding your trades, holding your trades, and then one candle comes back and takes you know most of your trades. Because understand this, if you have a nice push here and this candle is worth maybe 10 pips, right? Let's say this work equals to 10 pips, right? Uh, the next candle comes out and you're like, okay, let me wait for the next 15 minute open, right? And let me see if I can get an extra push. And that push then starts coming down and making a bottom wick. And now you have to hope for it to reflip here. When technically we might have hit a level here that doesn't make sense to hold. And if you've lost 10 pips, maybe out of a 20 pip trade, that's 50%. And that's 50% of your income, right? So do that over time. That's a big amount of money to lose. So having accurate take profits is very, very important here. So how are we going to identify basically take profits here? That's exactly what we're going to cover is how to identify accurate take profits and where you should be looking to take profit. So the first thing here is going to be obviously having your entry plan. Now, whatever time you enter, so whatever time frame you enter a trade is the time frame that you're going to look to take profit, right? So if we go ahead and look at some sort of move that we've had moving down here, uh, let's say for sales. Okay. So let's say we were looking for sales here on a 15 minute time frame. For me, 15 minute time frame is the time frame that I am going to be taking most of my trade. So immediately your take profit level is going to be the next support and resistance on the time frame that you took the trade. So for example, let's say I executed on sales break of this low here to continue down bearish stop loss above the highs like this, right? My take profit level is not going to be anywhere in here because this is clean candles. Technically, price should be able to move cleanly through these zones here. My take profit level is going to be somewhere inside of this zones. And what you normally do, right, is obviously the wicks can have reaction, but the most accurate is going to be the candle bodies here because this is my next support here, right? That is my next support. So this is my take profit level right at this zone here, right? So this is TP1 and this is basically where you want to be securing most of the time and where I secure most of the time at that normally ends up being like a one to one, uh, you know, most of the time here. Now, obviously, you could see there's no reason to close as the candle started to push down here. We didn't have heavy rejections. It quite smoothly reached your TP here. And that's because you're targeting basically the level that you took the trade on, right? So let's say we're looking in a buying scenario here. So in a buying scenario, let's go ahead and find somewhere where we have previous price action. So let's go see, take this example here. Let's say we have this resistance here again, 15 minute time frame. That's your next support. Although very small, it still counts. That is going to be your take profit level. As you can see, as price closed, got above this zone here, where's your take profit level going to be that next resistance on the time frame, right? And you can see, yes, we did pop up a little bit from that. And where do we revisit the next resistance, which would be technically your TP2 here. Uh, if there's no problems at TP1, because look at the rejection from TP1. This rejection here was an eight, nine pips, eight, nine pip rejection from your actual uh, point where you is a big loss of income, right? Technically from your entry, losing eight pips, especially if you start using bigger lots, 10 lots or something, that's $800 and you don't know if it's going to reflip up because it's hit a target right now the only time you know if it's going to continue up here is based on higher time frame which we're going to discuss next on how to hold your trades okay to next targets okay 
but as you can see when it hits the next major zone here this is what you don't want to be involved in you not taking profits here and having to have this 37 pip pullback that either hits your stop loss or you just end up getting a break-even trade. And this is what you can't predict because this move here could have easily happened here. Now, what we have to check is, was there a higher time frame level here? Because the number one place you should be taking profits at is higher time frame levels. As you can see, there was not even a higher time frame level here. But the number one key place to be taking profits is actually going to be, when you're looking to hold trades, it's going to be your four hour support and resistance. So in this scenario here, we can draw this four hour support right here and we can go back to that trade. We were looking at those cells back here, right? And we can see these zones here is where you really want to be looking to take profits. In this scenario, there was no reaction. So if there's no reaction at that zone, you could just, you know, trail your stop loss and, and not allow price to get back above, even if it just starts to, to move back above that zone close. Uh, but realistically, when you're looking to hold trades, you're looking to complete the higher time frame move. So what do I mean by the higher time frame move? This is where holding trades makes sense when we're in a trending market. When we're in a ranging market, a market that is basically sitting between two zones or something like this, we want to be done from point A to point B because it's not a high chance we will get continuation. But when we are trending with volume in times like this, this is where we can start to target higher time frame targets with the idea that price can pull back to entry but also can co continue to our higher time frame targets because we are trending bullish. And this is where session bias becomes important, identifying if we are fully bullish or fully bearish. I will you better check out my session bias video. We'll show you how to identify session bias. So when we have a bullish bias, we can then go to the daily time frame and the four hour time frame and start to identify targets using that. So when you're on the four hour time frame, right? Let's take an example that today, let's say we are trading from here. This close here, we have closed above this resistance. We know that this is the four hour resistance here that we've closed above. Okay, obviously, as you can see, there was bullish pressure for the last four eight you know so this daily candle here is closing bullish right because we could see it ended up you know it's not the strongest but it is closing bullish here right so we can replay to that so daily candles closing bullish here we can see our next four hour zone here is going to be where is going to be around in this zone right here not around but this is where it is that's your four hour resistance okay so we can uh that's the range that we're looking to trade right because there's nothing between here so 52 pip range if today we're going to trend that is the range that we're going to be able to trade 52 pips here okay and that's a higher time frame target if we go revisit the daily here we can see our daily target is actually going to be a little bit bigger daily candles closing bullish here as well and our daily target is actually going to be all the way up here at uh you know this zone here so this is going to be your daily resistance so on the four hour, we're obviously bullish today because daily created a support higher low, previous four hour closed above resistance, and we have room. So we know this is our four hour range, but on the daily, we have all the way up to this range here. And that's when we can start to hold these trades by targeting higher time frame zones. So if we go down to the 15 minute to where you would look to take entries, we would find a setup that we could end up taking here, which in hindsight is gonna be just this trade here, closing above this resistance here, putting stops would have to be a little bit wider here, right? Stops would have to be a little bit wider. And this is where it's sometimes okay maybe to take two positions because I think that this first position close above here, we obviously have our two take profit levels here, but this would be extremely hard to, to hold this trade here because of us buying into this resistance here, which is why I always encourage to secure. But once you've secured profits here, and we have structure because this is not the best entry because there's no structure. So one tip I'm going to give you is when you're taking trades and trying to hold to your next take profit levels, make sure that you have your stop loss under structure because you'll need that for to get the biggest move so price can be protected by that structure such as this example here. So let's take this candle close above here, right? And we know, we know we can put stop loss below structure, right? Something like this, 12 pip stop loss. And we know our max target can be daily time frame. So obviously TP1 is going to be that for our resistance. That's our higher time frame zone. That's our resistance where we need to be looking for what? Continuation. So we need to then identify once price reaches high, you know, for our resistance, What's next from this point is to realize that we should be taking profit here. 
But if you realize the daily does have space to continue up to the daily resistance, okay, you have to see what structure is doing at this point. Now, you will either lose the trade or win because, again, you're trying to complete that daily daily move here. So probabilities will be a little bit less. But don't be greedy if it's your first trade of the week. That's why in the beginning and in the introduction of the video, I said towards the end of the week, it's better to try this stuff. But here, nothing is telling you that we are breaking structure. As soon as candle breaks structure, this is where your knowledge about market structure to be able to hold the trades a little bit longer is going to come in useful. There's nothing that telling you that price is looking bearish here. And if something was to close, you can take a very small loss or stop loss will be hit. But we know our max TP is going to be that daily resistance. And as you can see during the day, based on the analysis, we could see we got from point A to point B reaching that four hour resistance, which was our major target. Once we relieve the four hour resistance, we can then go to our next zone. Now, personally, for me, when it comes to take profit levels, I don't like to always hold the full move. I'm the type of guy that would be able to take three positions in this day. My first position would be from stop loss below this candle here. First target going to be that 15 minute resistance here. OK, which is a, a one to one. My second position is going to be this candle close above here. Right. Fill the wick and look to continue to wear to this next 15 minute resistance right here. All right. That's my next move. Another one to one trade. OK, because these are accurate and efficiency for me. Efficiency me is worth a lot more because it's more consistency. Now, the second move is, of course, close above four hour resistance. Once we get that close above four hour resistance, same as this, fill the wick and continue to wear daily resistance. That gives you about a one to two here. Now, those are my three take profit levels during the day. So either you can have the approach to hold during the day, but you have to hold through the pullbacks or you can have the approach of being accurate with your TPs and you don't have to hold the pullbacks. You can get out, but there will be days where it just keeps pushing, pushing, and you have to be happy to accept that I'm more looking for the efficient move than looking for the biggest move. So understand your higher time frame. That's your best friend. That is where your take profit levels will start from support and resistance on higher time frame. The most intermediate, so the, the number one thing for taking profit is going to be the time frame that you enter the trade is the time frame where you need to be looking to take profits. Okay. Now, the last thing here, and I know there's a lot of different ways on the internet talking about liquidity grabs, blah, 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 as ways to take profit. The last one is going to be volume based taking profit. If you've noticed that there's a certain amount of push we get or there's a huge one candle and high chance we're going to retrace that. That is OK sometimes to take profit based on that. Uh, but that's a little bit more advanced. Let me know in the comments if you'd want me to make a separate video talking about that. But yeah, there's a lot of talk online about liquidity targeting opposite liquidity for for take profit levels. The best way is to target support and resistance here, as that is exactly why we built that support and resistance in the past was people taking profits and price coming down. We do not want to be involved with price coming down or price being up if we're in a short or a long, right? We don't want the trade going opposite way of the way we're in. So let's get out of the trade, secure what we're guaranteed, right? We don't want to give back to the market, take what you're guaranteed because we know at that resistance, we are given that opportunity to test the resistance. Once the resistance is tested, that's where probabilities start to skew themselves because now it's 50 50, 50% 50 it rejects from that. We lose some of our income, 50% we push through that. So either we can accept that higher time frame has more space, we can look to hold through it, right? And manage based on market structure, which makes sense when you have that bullish bias, when you know what bias is doing, when you have room on the higher time frame, or you secure up, take what the market gives you and get on with your day. So that's a little bit a personal preference, consistency preference, and just the way you want to navigate the market. I find the best way is a hybrid model when the opportunity presents yourself, especially when you're using bigger lot size, you can give yourself days where you look to hold the full trade. So that's exactly uh, the way I like to play it. So I hope that this video has been useful and you can find some value out of it. If you have, definitely leave a comment and a subscribe to join for more future videos. Uh, and yeah, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. With that being said, take care, trade shop, and hopefully catch you guys very, very soon. Peace.